Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Delhi police arrests Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorist Javed Matto. India's External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar reiterates firm stance against terrorism-based talks with Pakistan. And New Delhi formally asks Pakistan to hand over 2611 mastermind Hafiz Saeed. Let's begin the show. The Delhi police special cell has arrested a Hezbul Mujahideen terrorist who was wanted for several terror-related cases in Jammu and Kashmir. Javed Ahmed Matto was napped from Delhi's Nizamuddin area. Matto was carrying a reward of Rs 10 lakh and he was also on the radar of the National Investigation Agency. A report. On January 4th, the Delhi police special cell apprehended Javed Ahmed Matto, a wanted terrorist linked to Hezbul Mujahideen. Matto was captured during a search operation led by the National Investigation Agency. A resident of Jammu and Kashmir's support district, Matto was involved in five grenade attacks and implicated in the killings of five police personnel in the Union territory. According to the police, Matto is identified as one of the last surviving A++ designated terrorists from Jammu and Kashmir. In a major breakthrough, special cell of Delhi police or central agencies ki coordination ke saath, Javed Mattu, jo ki A++ category ka designated terrorist hai, Sopor ka rehne wala hai, aur jis pe 10 lakh plus inam hai, usko aaj forenoon mein arrest kiya gaya. ये काफी लंबे अरसे से स्पेशल सेल और सेंट्रल एजेंसीज की आपस की कोऑर्डिनेशन इसमें लगातार चल रही थी और जैसा कि स्पेशल सेल का मैंडेट है तो आगे की जो रिपब्लिक डे का भी ऑन कमिंग इवेंट है उसके मध्य नजर एक एक्स्ट्रा सेंसिटिविटी एक एक्स्ट्रा अलर्ट की डायमेंशन जो थी वो बरकरार किए हुए थी Hezbul terrorist Matto played a multifaceted role managing not only terror activities but also overseeing finances and logistics. His responsibilities included procuring weapons from ISI handlers across the borders. Matto, who carried a reward of Rs 10 lakh on his head, had reportedly visited Pakistan several times. In 2019, he was featured in the list of 10 most wanted terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. The security forces were behind him in the valley and he fled to Nepal after getting instructions from Pakistan's ISI. According to police, Matto came to Delhi to obtain more arms and ammunition to launch fresh attacks in Jammu and Kashmir. Javed Matto is a long फेरेस्ट है जो कि इसने वारदातों को अंजाम दिया है पांच ग्रेनेड अटैक्स जे एंड के में ये शामिल रहा है पांच पुलिस वालों को अलग-अलग घटनाओं में मारने में ये शामिल रहा है और डजंस ऑफ जो पुलिस पर्सनल हैं उनको इंजरीज आई हैं इन तमाम इंसिडेंट्स में हिजबुल मुजाहिदीन द लार्जेस्ट कश्मीरी टेररिस्ट ग्रुप was founded in 1989 and officially supports the Jammu and Kashmir's accession to Pakistan. Led by Sayyid Salahuddin, the group was formed as the militant wing of Pakistan's largest Islamic political party, the Jamaat-e-Islami. Hezbollah Mujahideen is focused on Indian security forces and politicians in Jammu and Kashmir and has conducted operations jointly with other Kashmiri militants. In its earlier days, the Hezbollah cadres received arms training from Afghan Mujahideen groups such as Hizb-e-Islami. 
Since its inception, Hezbollah Mujahideen has been supported by Pakistan's Inter-Services Intelligence. Today, the Indian Mujahideen is active but weaker and its remnants have a reduced capabilities. Terrorism today has spread across international borders, serving its sole purpose of disturbing peace and tranquility in the world. It has always destroyed the efforts of like-minded entities that relentlessly work to maintain peace across the globe. One of these entities is India, a country that has been a victim of terrorism emanating from Pakistan. However, New Delhi has always preached what it follows taking a strong stand against terrorism and extremism on each front. We have a report. We will not deal you know, on the basis of terms that they set where, where the practice of terrorism is deemed as legitimate. Pakistan has a long record of carrying out cross-border terrorism against its neighboring countries. Since Pakistan got its independence in the year 1947, the country has been engaging in cross-border terrorism against India. New Delhi has endured numerous heinous attacks over the years, all supported and sponsored by Pakistan, such as the assault on the Indian parliament in 2001, the 2005 Delhi bombings, the 2008 Mumbai terror attack, the attack on the Pathan Court Air Base, and the attack on the army camp in Uri have been attributed to Pakistan-sponsored terrorism. On one hand, Pakistan has made it clear that it will not give up on its experiment of jihadi terrorism on Indian soil. On the other hand, it continues to pretend to be interested in talks with New Delhi. India's External Affairs Minister S. Jay Shankar, however, emphasized in a recent statement that India will not engage in talks with Pakistan unless terrorism is unequivocally condemned. This marks a departure from the past when Pakistan sought to leverage terrorism in its dealings with India. What Pakistan was trying to do, not now, but over multiple decades, was really to use cross-border terrorism to bring India to the table. Okay? That, in essence, was its core policy. We have made that irrelevant by not, you know, not playing that game. Uh, now, uh, it's not a case that we, you know, that we don't, uh, uh, will not deal with a neighbor. After all, at the end of the day, a neighbor is a neighbor. But it is that we will not deal, you know, on the basis of terms that they set where, where the practice of terrorism is deemed as legitimate uh, and, uh, and effective in order to bring it to the table. The truth about cross-border terrorism remains clear. Islamabad has provided safe haven to various terror outfits and continues to use them as proxies against India. Pakistan Army provides safe passage to these terrorists to infiltrate into India's Jammu and Kashmir and carry out terror activities. A substantial number of terrorists supported by Pakistan remain hidden in Jammu and Kashmir actively seeking opportunities to carry out acts of terror. India's security forces consistently apprehend and neutralize terrorists infiltrating from Pakistan, and there have been instances of dismantling terrorist training camps in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Cross-border terrorism has inflicted numerous casualties in India, targeting civilian areas through bombings and shooting attacks. The ultimate aim is to instill fear and unrest by attacking public places like markets, tourist attractions and transport hubs. Recent incidents such as the ambush on Indian Army vehicles in Punch district resulting in the death of four soldiers highlight the ongoing threat posed by terrorists infiltrating from Pakistan. <laughs> ये नोटोरियस है इन्फिल्ट्रेशन के लिए वहां की टोपोग्राफी वहां के घने जंगल ऊंची नीची पहाड़ियां वहां पे छुपने की जगह और पूर विजिबिलिटी सारी की सारी जो है उसके वो मदद देती है इन्फिल्ट्रेटर्स को टेरिस को उसी का फायदा उठा रहा है आईएसआई और पाकिस्तान की आर्मी और बड़े पैमाने पर वहां को भेज रहा है 
और एक जॉइंट ऑपरेशन में हमारे तीन जवान जो है मारे गए और तीन जवान जख्मी हुए हैं ये साफ तौर पे पाकिस्तान की और आई की ऐसा ही की साजिश है और अभी समय आ गया है कि हम उनके जितने भी टेरिस्ट ट्रेनिंग कैंप्स हैं अक्रॉस दी बॉर्डर जिनके लोकेशन हमको कोऑर्डिनेट मालूम है उनको बर्बाद करें पाकिस्तान को साफ तौर पर मैसेज देना चाहिए बिल्कुल पुलवामा के बाद में या उगरी के बाद में कि हिंदुस्तान की जीरो टॉलरेंस पॉलिसी है और हम इसको बर्दाश्त नहीं करेंगे Leaders of terrorist groups operating from Pakistan such as Hafiz Saeed and Masood Azhar remain wanted by India yet Pakistan has failed to take decisive action against them indicating continued support for cross border terrorism However India has implemented various measures to counter this threat including military retaliation against terrorists and upgrading defenses along the India Pakistan border Despite the challenges India's security forces have achieved success in countering terrorist camps in Pakistan occupied Kashmir including a 2019 air strike on a Jaish Muhammad training camp cross border terrorism adversely affects the lives of ordinary Indians impacting internal security and economic growth a resolution hinges on Pakistan's cessation of support for terrorist groups and the prevention of its territory being used for acts of terrorism against india let's now move to pakistan where baloch activists are staging nationwide protests against enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings in the country in the wake of ongoing protests in balochistan a complete shutdown strike was also observed in multiple areas of pakistan in january Pakistan caretaker Prime Minister Kaka's harsh words have riled the protesters further. Prime Minister Anwar ul Haq Kaka had termed the Baloch protest against alleged extrajudicial killings in the province as irresponsible and provocative. He also linked the protests to terrorism against the state. <laughs> The movement will not stop here. If needed, we will bring the entire Balochistan to Islamabad. These were the words of Baloch activist Dr. Maharang Baloch while she was updating the media about the Pakistan government's stance on negotiation at the sit-in camp in Islamabad. For the past several days, Maharang and other Baloch activists have maintained a peaceful sit-in in front of the Islamabad press club. Instead of addressing their demands, the Pakistani state continues to issue constant threats. According to reports, Islamabad police are relentlessly threatening the protesters and harassing every citizen who are supporting their cause. Comparing the act of Islamabad police for fascism, Maharang and other activists are demanding the world to speak out against it. बलोच वो बलोच जिसने हमेशा से अपनी औरत को इज्जत दी आपने उसकी औरत को अपनी गलियों में घसीटा आपने उसकी औरत को मारा उस जब को आप क्या वो आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं उस जब को उस तकलीफ को हमसे ये पूछा जाता है कि इस तहरीक का आगे का लाइमल क्या होगा ये तहरीक पूरे बलोचिस्तान की तहरीक है और ये मैं वाजिया अल्फाज में कहना चाहती हूँ ये बलोच नसल खुशी के खिलाफ तहरीक है In the wake of ongoing protests in Balochistan, a complete shutdown strike was observed in multiple areas of Pakistan on January 3 against the extrajudicial killings and forced disappearances of Baloch people. The shutdown was also observed in Islamabad where people showed their support by voluntarily closing their shopping centers. Earlier, Pakistan caretaker Prime Minister Anwarul Haq Kaka termed the Baloch protests against alleged extrajudicial killings in the province as irresponsible and provocative. He said that people who are protesting in Islamabad are the relatives of those fighting against the state in Islamabad. He even stated that Baloch protesters are supporting armed rebellion with foreign help. This triggered strong criticism from the Baloch protesters who reiterated the call to continue the ongoing protest. Wo kadam 
वो बंदूक जो सिर्फ और सिर्फ बलोच मासूम लोगों को मारने के लिए है ना हम उस बंदूक के खिलाफ निकले आप हमें सख्त कहे आप हमें जो भी कहे लेकिन ये वो हकीकत है जो हम बयान करेंगे आपका आपका मुखरू चेहरा जो है ना इस दुनिया को दिखाएंगे जब आप यूएन में जाकर जो है ना कश्मीर के लिए बात करते हैं मैं कश्मीरियों से भी कहती हूँ कि पाकिस्तान आपका कोई हमना नहीं Pakistan army has systematically carried out atrocities on the people targeting intellectuals especially journalists students and political activists They have been carrying out all forms of human rights violations to silence those who seek their rights and demand justice The Baloch are suffering both socially and financially A large number of them who have migrated to other countries for their safety are now demanding the United Nations and other human rights organizations to protect the Baloch identity. They have high hopes from the international community as they continue to fight against repressive policies of Pakistan. The government of India has recently made an official demand to Pakistan. New Delhi has asked to extradite 2611 Mumbai terror attacks mastermind and a UN proscribed terrorist Hafiz Saeed to face trial in a particular terror financing case. Pakistan Foreign Ministry received the official request from the Indian government urging initiation of the legal process. According to India's Ministry of External Affairs, India conveyed a request along with relevant supporting documents to Islamabad. India has repeatedly called upon Pakistan for a successful conclusion of the trial against Mumbai attack accused like Saeed and Zakir Rahman Lakhvi in Pakistan. However, Islamabad has done little to bring Saeed to justice. Let's delve into the details in our next report. India has been a victim of terrorism for decades now. And like India, the rest of South Asia also suffers from terrorism. All thanks to neighboring Pakistan, which has remained a breeding ground of terrorists, the Islamic nation has created an elaborate ecosystem to support terrorism beyond its geographical boundaries. On the other hand, India over the years has been the one to denounce Pakistan's terror activities and exposed it on various international platforms. From Al Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden, Jaish chief Masood Azhar to leader of Hizbul Mujahideen Syed Salahuddin, many global terrorists have taken safe refuge in Pakistan. Among these dreaded terrorists, one is Hafiz Saeed, founder of UN designated terror outfit Lashkar Taiba Hafiz Said known for his involvement in 2008 Mumbai terror attacks is listed on India's NIA most wanted In April 2012 the United States placed a bounty of 10 million US dollars on Said for his role in the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks that killed 166 civilians For many years India has demanded that Said be handed over Yet Hafiz Said had been seen roaming freely around Pakistan. Recently India formally demanded the Pakistan government to extradite Hafiz Said. As you are aware the person in question is wanted in numerous uh, cases in India. He is also a UN proscribed terrorist. In this regard we have conveyed a request along with relevant supporting documents to the government of India to extradite him. a government of pakistan to extradite him to india to face trial in a particular case however as expected islamabad swiftly rejected the demand citing the lack of a bilateral treaty between the two nations to address such matters this sharp refusal underscores pakistan's steadfast unwillingness to heed india's demand projecting a resolute patronage to the mastermind of the 2008 Mumbai attacks while a pakistani court sentenced said to 31 years in prison in 2022 on terror financing charges india perceives these penalties as a response to international pressure primarily from the financial action task force and western powers the extradition plea not only reiterates india's long standing demand but also introduces charges of money laundering for terror purposes 
emphasizing the shortcomings in current international efforts against designated terror groups. Apart from the fact that Hafiz Saeed, whom India has requested Pakistan to extradite to India, is a known terrorist who has waged war on India numerous times. He is also accused of money laundering. The evidences of every act of his has been given by India to Pakistan. But Pakistan, as always, never sends back one person who is accused of waging a war on India despite India giving evidences because Pakistan enjoys the full support of USA, the Western European countries and China. And that is the reason that Pakistan can get on brazenly by supporting and hosting such dangerous terrorists on its soil. It is high time that the international community comes together and puts pressure on Pakistan. While India presses for the extradition of Hafiz Saeed, a permissive environment in Pakistan has paradoxically allowed him to wield political influence. The latest development reveals that lashkar e taiba has strategically entered the political arena, setting the stage for the upcoming general elections scheduled for February 8, 2024. Adding to the complexity, Hafri Said's son, Talha Said, designated a terrorist by India, is set to contest polls from the National Assembly constituency NA124 in Lahore. Holding the reins of LET's finances as its second in command, his political foray raises concerns about the open legitimization of ideologies that can potentially breed radicalization. This development demands heightened international scrutiny, emphasizing the need for a unified and comprehensive strategy against designated terror groups and their sponsors. As tensions escalate, the region teeters on the brink, underscoring the critical importance of addressing this issue to safeguard regional stability. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa.anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.